Okay. We are unannounced and live. Surprise! Um, oh, who's there? I see you. Don't be shy. Say hello. Hello, lovies. I see you. There are four of you. Oh, how big am I cutting this? Uh, well, no one say hi, so I know that you guys can hear me and see me okay. Please. Uh, live chat. Okay. All right. You guys can sit back and be secret admirers. Oh, I do want to say the new tonic trimmer. I had a problem with my other trimmer and, uh, Hi, Linda. Linda, I say. And uh, I contacted Tonic and they did send me a new trimmer. So that was very nice of them. Um, probably helped that I rave about their trimmer and I have like four of them. But <laughs> anyways. Okay. So while we're waiting for some people to jump on. And if you want to, my feelings will not be hurt if you head on over to BlueNightRubberStamps.com because their pan pastels just went live. Ah! Run, go get them. Um, so that's what I played with here. And I was really just kind of farting around and this came together so beautifully that um i had to share it with you guys hello deb from australia uh deb that is on my bucket list for one of the places i want to go visit and correct me if i'm wrong deb but it is going into you guys's like fall and winter season because um your your seasons are opposite from ours right is that correct hello d all right, so what I just did is cut down a piece of Nina Solar White. This is cut down to five and a quarter by four. And we're going to replicate this. So um, the great thing is it doesn't take very long. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is color my paper. Just so simple to do. And again... Head on over to Blue Night Rubber Stamps and get your pan pastels because they are not going to last. The value she has on these, awesome. Deb, I don't envy you. Sorry, but I missed my summer and uh, I'm not going to give it back. Okay. So I'm going to start out with um, the pan pastel sets on Blue Night Rubber Stamps. There are two sets. There's a sunset, which is your warm colors. It's like red, orange, yellow, um, a black and, or a white. You'll have to check it out. And there's a cooler set, which is like your blues and your purples. Um, you can also buy, I think, four or five individual colors if you want to round off your set. That includes a colorless blender, which I highly, highly recommend a pearlescent, the tints, which are a lighter color, and a bronze. So there's a couple other different colors on there you can get as well. Hello, Fox Girl. I like that name. That's cool. So you, you will also get, if you purchase the set, you will get a softy knife with two replacement heads. You will get the, what's this thing called? I keep forgetting it. Sponge bar. And you will also get one of the angle slices, which is this guy, which you actually can use one, two, three, four of the flat areas. And then if you wanted to use the edges. So I have three of these and I have each corner dedicated to a color. All right. So let's get started on the first one I did. I did it on watercolor paper, but I want to do it on plain paper today. 
And um, actually, uh, let's see how it works out. So again, we have Nina Solar White. And then I'm going to start with my angle slice. And you can see I have red, orange, and yellow on this angle slice. I have my pan pastels here. And all I'm going to do, and very lightly, go into that color and swipe it in the corner. That's it. Very easy to do. Now I'm going to turn my angle slice and go into the orange corner. Same thing. And just pull that down. And if I need more color, I just add a little more. And keep rubbing until I feel like it's blended. Then I have the yellow corner on this side. Nice golden yellow. This is my favorite color yellow. Now, if you only have one of these, the only, the only thing you need to do to clean it is you just um, take your paper towel and you just rub on your paper towel and that cleans it. And then you're ready for the next color. Even though the sponge is stained, you can tell when it's uh, rubbed all the color off. But for the sake of saving time, I have other sponges, so we'll keep going. I'm going to rub into this corner of this other sponge. Turn my tray around so you guys can see. And I'm going to go into the green. And I know through the screen... You cannot tell how smooth they are, but they are super, super smooth. All right, now I'm going to go into the turquoise, my blue side, and blend that in. I feel like I need a little bit more green in this corner down here, so I'm just going to blend that in. Back to my blue. I'm going to go in with the tiniest bit of the darker blue and just do down here just to give a little gradient. And then these pans are pretty thick. I wish makeup came in pans this big. Hey, Tracy. Um, purple. Tracy debuts her guest designer for Blue Night Rubber Stamps tomorrow, Tracy. And magenta, which is like this, my favorite color in real life. That's it. Now, you can go in and add more color and keep it blending wherever you feel like you need to add more color and blend it. And until you have it just right. And you can layer these colors and mix these colors. And I just went in reverse order there and pulled all the same colors back down. Now that's pretty smooth, but if you wanted to blend it out more, this is where the colorless blender comes into place. So I'm going to move this tray out of the way. Bring my other tray in. This one has my colorless blender. And let me grab a cleaner sponge or a cleaner corner of a sponge. I need to buy more sponges. Tracy, make sure you order lots of sponges because you're going to be addicted. Okay. And all the colorless blender does, even though it looks white, is it's just like when you're using like Copics. It smooths everything out so you don't have any harsh lines and blends everything together. So you can see how those lines just melded into one another.
and it doesn't change the color of what you've done. It just melds everything together, blends it nice and smooth. So now we have this nice, smooth, buttery background. All right, that's it. You use very little residue, very little dust, very easy to blend. I'm just gonna wipe my down here real quick. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is our stamping. And what I like about them is, look, I'm really not that messy. I love my distressing, so you guys know that. But when, you know, start getting ink all over your hands, like then you have to worry about touching things and ink getting everywhere. And with this, it's so easy to clean up and I don't have to worry about any of that. And look how easy it is. I just put the lid on. And that's how easy it is to put it away. Done. All right, so now we're going to take our little panel. It is easy, Linda. If I didn't have to talk through the video, I would have been done by now. That's how easy it is. Because we're a whole... 11 minutes into it. All right, I'm using two stamp sets. These are both from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Um, the first one is the Magical Unicorn, and I'm using the big guy. It comes with the big and the little one. And then the sentiment is from Forever After, and the sentiment is this one. Dance with fairies, ride a unicorn, swim with mermaids, and chase rainbows. So we have the unicorn and the rainbows. Um, for this little guy. Now, because when you stamp him, he faces that way. That's why I put him on the right side of my card. And his horn, again, this panel is five and a quarter by four. So I'm going to move it up slightly. His horn is where I really want to make sure that doesn't come off the paper. I don't mind if the grass comes off the paper, the bottom of the stamp, but I want to make sure that his horn is on the paper. We don't want a half a horn on a unicorn, right? Okay, and then we can stamp the sentiment at the same time. I'll just put that right next to it. Because I'm using the Tim Holtz tool, it makes it really easy. And I'm just going to check and make sure everything looks pretty straight. Which I think it does. And I'm going to use my uh, VersaFine Claire black ink. My handy dandy little handle here so I don't get clumsy and drop my ink pad. It does take a couple of inkings when you're using the watercolor paper, which is why I switched over to the smoother paper. So hopefully this will only take one or two inkings. We'll see. Hi, Dee Dee. Yes, head on over to Tracy Schultz's YouTube. She's going to be the guest designer for Blue Night Rubber Stamps. I'm so excited for you, Tracy. Ooh, that actually, the sentiment came out pretty good. I'm going to do one more time. All right, I think I'm done stamping. Now, you can leave it like this. Looks This looks really cool by itself, right? But let me show you what's cool about pan pastels. I don't know if I can zoom you guys in a little closer. There we go. A little better. Okay. So what's cool is you can take this handy-dandy tool, and I'm sure all of you have them, so expensive though. I don't know. It's called erasers. Leah gave me this pencil to use. 
<laughs> so all you're going to do, you want to give that a second to dry. In fact, I'm going to heat set my ink just so I don't smear it. And that's just for the ink because you guys know that VersaFine ink is a pigment ink. So, you know, if you go attacking it with the eraser, we might smudge it. So I'm going to start with the larger areas of the unicorn. And I'm just going to erase that color out. Do you remember when we were kids and we had those like secret writing, uh, you know, those little notebooks we had. You know, and it was like this magical, invisible ink stuff. That's what it's kind of like. We're just taking that ink off and like, ooh, revealing a white unicorn. Now, I could have done this the other way and masked it and then stamped it and then colored it. But um, I was feeling very lazy. I don't feel like getting all that stuff out. Tracy, did you think I colored it in? I cheated. You guys know I am one to make crafting quick and easy. Now, as we get up near his face, I'm just using this regular pencil eraser. And I'm avoiding his... Um, his mane, his hair, because I want it to stay that kind of rainbowy color. So I'm just doing his ears, his face, his body. We'll do his little horn. I got to go out and buy one of those fancy click erasers now. See, now I'm going to invest in an eraser. <laughs> All right, so you can stop there. You can stop where we were. You can stop here. But wait, let's take it up a notch. I really wanted it to pop. So you can see here on the watercolor paper, it really looks like it popped. So I cheated a little bit. I grabbed my tin of color pencils, which was closest to me. I didn't even get any special color pencils out. These are my my cheapy color pencils. They're not even the good Arteza ones. And did not want to use my sand eraser because the sand eraser kind of, um, it pills the paper a little bit. It literally like removes the top layer. So I tried not to use that eraser. I used a soft eraser, okay? So just to tell you the difference. You guys know I use my sand eraser for everything, but in this case, I did not. So now all I'm going to do is take my color pencils doesn't matter what brand they are. And I just started to kind of color in and mimic what is already on here. So like this part of his mane is already green. That's not the same green I used. That's an ugly green. Oh, I don't like that color green. No problem. Can always erase it. So I tried to get it to kind of match the colors I had already laid down. Is that light turquoise blue? So it matches the pan pastels. And again, you guys already have these. You don't need to go out and buy new pencils or markers. Pan pastels will work any of the mixed media you already have. I have colored over it with markers, Copics, watercolor markers. Colored over it with color pencils. There was no drying time. It was stamp and go. The only thing I dried was my ink because I didn't want my ink to smudge. Um, 
I'm going to take some more of that green. Where's that ugly green go? Take my horse through the old town road. That song plays all day and all night, and my kids sing it, and it's stuck in my head. All right, so now for the white part. Now, if you're going to do the white, you need a white and a black. This white worked very well for me. This is a pastel chalk pencil. Which means it goes down very white and it is like chalk. So, again, this is all optional. But if you want to do this, you want to be careful because this white is very opaque. And so when you put it down, it actually will cover up some of the detail of the stamp. So I am putting it very lightly over those detailed areas. But I don't want to completely cover them up because then I won't see any of that shading in my little uh, hair. So I'm really just kind of doing the bigger areas. And anywhere that there's any kind of detail shading, I'm really not going in and coloring them. I'm coloring around them. Because if you color over them, then everybody's going to know you colored the whole thing, right? So we want it to look like we didn't really color this too much. This is our no mask, faux mask technique. That's what I'm going to call it. And you want to make sure your pencils are nicely sharpened so you can get into those fine areas. And again, you could have stopped step one, step two. We're just stepping it up a notch here. And it's still, I mean, we're only 20 minutes into this. Still pretty quick. Okay. Now, the areas that I've left alone, I'm going to go in with... A gray pencil. Oh, well, this is close enough. And any of those, those in in black, I'm just using the gray to shadow it in. Gives it the stamp more dimension. Makes him look a little more realistic. As far as unicorns go. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my black pencil. And anywhere where I may have stepped my boundaries in coloring. I'm just going to take the black pencil and fix that. These little hooves have highlights, so I want to re-highlight that. And then his little spots here. And then always do the eyes. If you can do the eyes, do the eyes, because that really makes the art pop. If you don't like something, just erase it. Go back to where you were. And then if you take too much pan pack, dab in with your little 
blending tool and blend it back in. That's it. Now the only thing I will mention is you do need to set the pan pastels because you don't want your brown rubbing off when you have this on a card. You know, it's, it's usually handled by a few people. So the oils from your skin will lift, um, will lift that up. But you can see here, here is the one I did first, which was on watercolor paper. And I did take a couple of stampings. And this one I did not use the blender on. So you can see how sharp the lines are between the colors because I didn't use the colorless blender on it. And then this one I used the smooth paper on and I did use the blender so you can see they do kind of smooth out and blend a little better. Plus it was easier to stamp and easier to erase off the smoother paper. And it looks like I masked and all I did was erase. No masking. It's so easy to do but doesn't it look like I spent time masking it and coloring it? Nope. So now I'm going to take my little images here my little spray box. I'm going to raise you guys up because we don't want that getting sprayed. Sorry about my finger in the way. And I have a tiny little spray can. Oh, yes. Thumbs up, they. Thank you. And that will lock all the colors in as well as the color pencils and the pan pastels. Now, you'll see it's coming through here, but once it dries, it won't look like that. It actually intensifies the colors. Like, they really pop now. So I will leave these sit overnight to dry, and then I will mount them to a card base, and they'll be done. So that's all I have for tonight. If you guys like the pan pastels, the stamps and the pan pastels, you can now purchase at stay You get them is the cool set and the warm set. Um, I kind of combined mine here. So all of these colors are available. You get seven in each set. You also get the tray. And then for tools, you're going to get one knife with two knife covers. You're going to get one of the angled slice round, which again, you can see I've used four different colors on mine. Um, and then you're also going to get the sponge bar, which is a little bit smaller of a, a blending sponge. Very easy to use. Great starter set. There are also other individual colors if you want to pick up some other individual colors like the colorless blender. There's some lighter tints. There's some pearlized colors that you can mix up as well. But I would say give it a chance. And if you can for stamps, check out your local stamp show. I know she travels with the heirloom rubber stamp show. She will have these on display at her show. And these are normally, um, I picked mine up because I couldn't wait a couple weeks ago at um, Dick Blick. And they were 7 to $8 each. So you're going to get seven in your kit. Plus, you're going to get the, the storage tray. Plus, you're going to get the starter set of tools. And I think it's $49.99. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. Um, and then, like I said, you get, you get two different color schemes. And then you can pick up some extras if you want as well. All right. I will link everything for you guys down below. Um, if you have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, I do appreciate your thumbs up. The spray I used is... Krylon Shortcuts, which is basically just clear spray paint is what it is. Um, this one is called Clear Gloss. You can also buy it in matte. And you just want to spray that in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to be down here getting high after painting your rainbows and unicorns because then your kids are going to wonder what's wrong with you. What other questions you got? Yes, Fox Girl. I understand you can use makeup sponges. Um, in fact, if you check out Lynn um, on our blog post, I will post the blog post for Blue Night Rubber Stamps. She actually uses 
a makeup sponge very similar to the makeup sponge I use every morning. So yes, you can do that. You also have these handles for your ink pads. These are the magnetic hand has been invented. So this wooden handle comes with two. This handle gives you more area to do that. Makes it easier for stamping. Some ink pads, which are really little, like the Memento ink pads, this really makes a difference in stamping. So um, I do have the handle and I bought quite a few of these metal tags to put them on my ink pads and make it easier as well for stamping. Um, but like I said, check out Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. I will list their shopping page. I will list the items that I use, including the two stamp. And I will also list the um, blog post so you guys can check out from the other designers as well what they're up to. And don't forget to go check out Tracy Schultz on her YouTube. She will be guest designing for Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. And um, she's got her first uh, post going up. So let's show Tracy some love, please. Hello, Janie. Yes, I have to get Leah to bed. I got to work tomorrow. But thank you for jumping on board. Tracy, good luck. And again, if you guys have any questions or anything you need, don't hesitate to post it down below. I will link everything for you guys so you can go do some shopping. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so I cleaned out my...